Yeah, hello, welcome to Love Some Workshop again. Hopefully, we're live, and hopefully we won't be getting any uh, hitches this week. Hopefully everything will be uh, going fine. So, as you can see, sort of um, moving on from where we got to last week, we started off with that twist around the outside, and we've done the work to shape the globe. I'll just go over again always, you know, for anyone who's not familiar with it at all, we always put a story and a message into our love spoons. So again, this one, it will tell a bit of a story. Uh, we got this twist around the stem, representing binding and growing together. Difficult times, difficult year, so hopefully it'll help us, you know, sort of um, grow then as as a as a world population. Um, Celtic symbol, interesting people the Celts, very intuitive that sort of thing. So um, yeah, we've got that symbol in there. What we're moving on to today, we're going to focus on this camera symbol. So why is that in there? Well, we've got the globe on there for recording this year, 2020. And of course, one of the reasons with that, we've been in a global pandemic. We're in the, the middle of a global pandemic, so it records that. But also as well, we are increasingly taking what we do, as in our family workshop and the love spoons that we make, we're taking that increasingly to a global audience. So um, I'll just press that camera as well because I just forgot to focus it before uh, I started the live stream. Yeah, so that's the idea behind that. We're changing then as a, as a family business, as a family workshop, and instead of just relying, as you traditionally have, on people coming to, to our workshop, we've... We've never had a live stream run smoothly yet. We've got a, a new camera, so... When I get chance, I will be setting our new camera up and hopefully uh, that'll solve the problems, but I'm not 100% uh, not sure that it will. I just think it's something that we get used to with live streams. So, as you mentioned, but unfortunately you couldn't hear me, <laughs> we're just working on the camera and we're doing our stop cuts. Um, we're working now on the lens. It's a, based on a replica of my trusty 35mm lens. So the lens is, when it comes to cameras, is proud, and the rest of it then is, is sort of pushed back. So that's what we're going to try and replicate. Um, and it's, it's always nice doing something different, because we're always carving different symbols. And the camera then is, a, is another symbol that we've never worked on before. For anyone who didn't see our first live stream, we, uh, what, we're, what we're basically uh, doing here, we're working on a recycled piece of sycamore. So recycling, reusing the woods, it's an important part of what we do. And so this one is, yeah, is made from a, a recycled piece of sycamore. It was a piece of wood that we made, excuse the banging, made from uh, a piece of sycamore that was originally, the original piece was the one that we used for our love spoon to record 2001. This offcut then had been left in a drawer and we didn't really have any use for it. So that was why we uh, chose that one to sort of highlight the environmental issue. And also is perfect for what I had in mind for the design. So as you can see, we're just working around the outside, trying to give some depth to the carving. And we'll we'll just work on that surround. And what I'm going to try and do is to create when we're doing sort of relief carving like this. You're you're working in two dimensions, but you're trying to give it that sort of three dimensional feel. So you can see already the shutter button at the top there. We push that back. We're now working on bringing the surround. We're just pushing that back a little bit as well. And then afterwards, we're going to create that effect of almost three dimensions. The lens, of course, that will be at the front. So we're looking to bring that out in the design. And the, uh, the camera body then, that's sort of in the mid-ground. So the shutter 
is push back the camera itself in the mid-ground and the lens, that will be towards the front. So by pushing back the surround, that gives us a little bit more depth to be able to work into. I'm now going to go round our lens just to give the, the carving that much more depth. And then we've got a few, we've added a few sort of buttons and features just to give it a, a little bit of extra, extra dimension. That's what you're sort of trying to create though, those sort of effects, those different effects in it. It'll be like a, a little prime lens as opposed to a big zoom lens. So yeah, these are the sort of processes that you uh, that you go through. Now this one we're working is a piece of sycamore. Lovely wood to, to work in. It's one that over the years we haven't always found the most straightforward for drying out. Because quite often you can get a little bit of a, a black streak that runs through it. But this particular piece we managed to dry out effectively. Um, of course you do see it growing quite widely. It's not a native timber here in the UK. But the reason you see it a lot is, is because of that winged seed. So it tends, those, those helicopters, they fly all around. And that's why you have sycamore trees sort of sprouting up all over the place. So hopefully from this demonstration, what you're starting to see is how you can create layers and depth to your carving. You know, by recognising the pieces that you want to bring out, it allows you to add another dimension to what you're doing, as opposed to just keeping it like a flat carving, by recognising that that lens is going to be at the front and the shutter button on the top is going to be pushed back. It gives you layers to your carving, which then makes it more interesting and appealing to the eye. Here we are. Seems as if our early problems, they've now gone away, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Unfortunately, it's one of the, uh, the downsides of doing live streams. You do tend to... Last week we were having picture problems. So it goes... It stands to reason that this week the problem is, is sound. We haven't done a perfect live stream yet, but it uh, certainly gives you an appreciation for how some of the, uh, the, the TV companies manage to do a live stream with uh, multiple cameras. Not straightforward. So already we're starting to get that shape. We've also got Thomas the, car uh, Thomas the woodcarver here with us. Hello. He's doing a little bit of. Uh, we've had a few uh, few orders, few different orders come in, so he's been doing some uh, packing for us this afternoon. A few um, oh, that's, that's great, isn't it? Christmas I've, decorations. I've just been doing the packing, of course. I've you've just been doing the packaging this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, yeah. That's all I've been doing, like you know. Well, what else have you been doing this afternoon? I've been tidying up these spoons that you've made. There we are. They're a bit rough. So as you can see, we're just building up those layers. We're going to push that shutter button down a little bit further. And it's basically, it's an impression. That's what you're, that's what you're doing is creating that impression of a camera. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna put a brand on this one. What, what do you think, should we put a brand? Or are we gonna give away our, our loyalties, our... No, definitely not gonna no. put a brand on it, no. No, no branding. We don't attempt faith. That's right. We're not giving away our, our loyalties at this stage. We've actually, um, on that subject, we've, we've actually changed, we've changed our allegiance, haven't we? We've had to completely change direction with what we're doing with cameras because of a few sort of um, technical issues. But hopefully, in the coming months, we'll see the benefits of that. So, we've got that lens now. We've got that sort of being brought out. I'm saying it's more of a, a little prime lens as opposed to a, a big zoom lens, because a zoom lens, we'd need a, a thicker piece of wood. So we're creating that effect. And this is what we're basically, you know, you're doing, is, is to, to create an impression and to give depth to the carving, to give it detail. You refer to a lot of what we do as 
Do you refer to it as shallow, shallow relief? Is that what you refer to it as? I think so, yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's what we're, as opposed to it being sort of sculpture and things like that. There we are. Are you looking for the... I'm looking for a go. He's cur you're currently working on a little Christmas decoration there, and you? This got to go uh, yeah. out in the post this week. So he's just tidying it up. So he's obviously, he spotted something that I've missed. No, what it is, you know, <clears throat> I mean, these these are very simple projects. Can I can I show one or am I not allowed to? Of course you can. Yeah, oh, there there we are. Where do I put it? But there? Put it right in there. So we can see it. There you go. That's one of our simple sort of projects. Doesn't look a lot of work. Um, but, um, it's the same amount of finishing on this small <laughs> spoon that there is on <coughs> one of the larger ones. Um, it's quite interesting actually because we get a lot of requests and people sort of think that they, they, they think if they ask for a design that we do, but ask for it smaller, that it's less work. And it's not, because it's, it's, it, it, sometimes it can even be more work, because once you get below a certain size, it can be quite delicate, isn't it, and quite intricate. Right. Um, so it can actually be more work for us, as opposed to it being less work. So when it comes to sort of wood carving, si sizes can be a bit of a, a funny thing, really. It doesn't sort yeah. of stand to reason... The smaller the spoon is, the the easier it is. It, it, quite often, it's the it's to the contrary, isn't it? That a very very small um, design, because it becomes more intricate, is is more difficult to, to carve. That's right. A project like this one as well. Then, this is very much where, you know, for me, the love spoon comes into its own because um, it's it's storytelling. And that's, that's what we're sort of doing, is, is telling the story, getting a message across. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're, we're very much sharing a message then through the work that we do. So we looked at this last week, how this is a message of hope. You know, we, we, more and more of us with the circumstances and the situation are, are sort of being put into lockdowns again. And it, it, <coughs> that's the idea behind... This love spoon then is is sort of trying to stay positive and a, a positive message then for for the future. And, uh, the nice thing as well, Dave, if you think about it, wow! I mean, I I opened the business back in 1975, so I was carving before that. Yeah. And I used to make presents for mum. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so, you know, the job you're doing there now is going back to when I first started, because we're making the spoon for the year, so there's no problem about, oh, how much is this spoon going to cost? Yes. We're just making it. We're making it for fun, basically. Yeah. And it's nice then, on top of that, we're making it for fun, but we can also share it with, with yourselves. And we've done, we've been doing this the last couple of years, um, but it's even nicer now to be able to do it live so you can actually, you know, join us in, in that process and see exactly how we do that. And that's, that's the thing. I, I was actually writing on our website about this today. Um, how, you know, our, our work then, it's, it's always sort of been about a story and a message, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, whilst we are a, a family workshop and a family business... Uh, you know, telling messages, telling stories through the work that we do, that's... That's 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 one of the uh, that's sort of the um, the foundation of a lot of what we do, really, isn't it? Yeah. So as you can see, we are making progress there. We're going to turn it back around in the vise because the bottom the bottom of the camera now we need to work on that again. And because this is something different, because we've never carved something like this before. We're learning as we go, because, you know, for anybody watching this and you're learning wood carving, you're interested in wood carving, don't sort of think that I've, I've come here now and I've sat down and I've got it all planned out and it's pre-planned. Um, unfortunately, nothing, nothing of the sort. I haven't got any set plan and I may carve this and decide, 
no, I'm not happy with X, Y, and Z, and, and actually change it. Um, I think a lot of what we do then, it's, it's improvised, isn't it? I can think of a few cases uh, this year where I've carved love spoons, and I've carved a symbol, and I've gone over it four or five times, changing the symbol, just to get it um, the way that it should be then. And that's something then, when it comes to wood carving, you know, if you, if you make something, if you, if you carve it and you're not happy with it, that's the beauty of it. You can always carve deeper into the wood, change the design slightly and, um, yeah, in, in, improve on what you've done. Best example I can give that uh, is actually the cat design. We've tried for years to get the cat right and this year we seem to have finally cracked it. But the number of failed attempts at getting a nice, a nice cat are, are quite significant and we've tried again and again at different times and abandoned it and come back to it that sort of thing and uh, I think this year we've we finally cracked it so what we're gonna do we're gonna try and finish off bringing the depth of the camera body back just like so it's interesting all the time with this you're trying to read the grain and you're trying to work with the grain as much as possible and you can see we keep shaping it and keep getting those layers keep working back into the wood giving it that depth afterwards then the usual method that I use is to um, sand it but that's personal personal preference and your own sort of personal personal approach but we're just giving it we've now got yeah, that shutter is pushed back. We've got our, and I'll repress that. You'll have to tell me if uh, there's any problems on the sound again, yelling. Um, that, yeah, that shutter is pushed back. We've now got our lens towards the front. YouTube is not receiving enough video. Change. Yeah, it's telling us we got more messages that there's problems, but what I can see looks looks fine to be honest with you. If that's what it's streaming, I got no problem with that. There we are. So, are we ready? I'm just looking at it. Are we just about ready to start shaping our lens? And what I got in 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 mind, what I've sort of planned out. So there we are, I've contradicted myself. I said I didn't have a plan and now I said I am. What I got in mind is to have like the rim of the lens and then the, yeah. Sorry, just just concentrate in two seconds there. Um, yeah, so we'll have that rim of the lens and then the glass will be slightly curved on the inside. Spot the wood carver who enjoys a bit of photography. Most times when you're doing a job, so you wouldn't be you wouldn't be worrying about little things like that. But I, I'm I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking half as a wood carver now and half as a photographer because I want to have a nice little bit of curved, good quality glass inside the rim of my camera. So I'm thinking as a photographer now. See if if I was doing this for a photographer, um Nice wide angle lens. We'd have a little, there's a little, little bit of a, a little bit of a curve to the glass. Eh? I'm looking at my lens here. And because there's that nice little curve to the glass, I want to replicate that in, in the woods. But that's it. It's great fun. And you can bring in, you know, all sorts of ideas and features. In terms of this piece of wood then, it's not the, it's not the easiest to carve, but it's certainly not the most difficult you know it's it's um it's a perfectly acceptable piece of wood to carve be interested to ask thomas thomas wood carver quick question and i'm asking you now something you probably he probably won't be able to answer to be honest with you but um do you have any memories of working on this piece of wood originally when you carved it back in 2001 do you remember because sometimes we do remember a piece of wood. That's, I, ask, that's a big ask, that is, though. I know I'm getting on a bit, but I do remember. Yeah. Because... What um, were your memories of this particular piece of wood? 
Nice piece of wood? It was a nice piece of wood. Yeah. But if you remember, it was much thicker. It, it was, yes. The original. Well, in one of these live streams now, as we're working on this one, we'll have to get the original down, maybe towards the end of this series of live streams. we get the original There's down. There's another piece, though, isn't there? Another, Somewhere there is. Yeah, but don't run off. Come on, t t tell us about tell us about your thoughts of it. What were you, uh, what were your experiences? That's what we would well, like to know. How did the original? How did you find it to work with? Well, that was the original of the two thousand and one. Yeah. Spoon, and the idea was for it to be surrounded by pearls. pearls. Calling um, a pearl wedding anniversary and for yourself so, and and mum. Um, when I cut it, yeah, I, I decided to. I had a piece of sycamore, and it was at least oh I don't know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, yeah, thick. So I split it, but um, at what stage? Because there's there's two offcuts with this. So at what yeah. stage did you decide that it was too thick? I, I, I that side I can't remember. No, but that's what happened. I um. You decided that it was then, too thick uh, for the job. I decided uh, it wasn't what I wanted. So I had to find another piece of sycamore. <coughs> so, so, uh, so hang on, what, what happened? Is this the same piece of wood as the original or is it another piece of wood? No, it's, it's, it's a different piece of wood altogether. It's a different piece of wood? Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's me asking you what was the, the original like to carve. So, and this isn't... I thought... See, I assumed that this was an offcut from, from the original. So that's what's thrown me off there. I thought that this was taken... No, that's much easier than the one I had to do. Right, so this is a much easier piece of wood. Yeah. Much more difficult in your day. Oh, yeah. A familiar story. Yeah, wood was much harder when I was uh, doing my apprenticeship. There we are. It's all. It's it's too easy now. Yeah. And the interesting thing, see these tools. Well, that, look, you, the tools. You, you've got a you've got a machine in there to sharpen your chisels. I have to do it all by hand. <sighs> but you 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 bought the machine. Well, to make <laughs> life easier for you. All oh, right, there we are. There we are, so, yeah. It's a good bit of kit, though, isn't it, the tall mech? Yeah. Didn't know you were born, and I always think back sometimes and think, oh, look at that, he carved all of that, and he, he didn't have access to the tall mech. And now we're getting into the realms of sharpening, and the interesting thing on that is that, yeah, whilst when he first uh, suggested, when, when Dad first suggested that he was going to buy the tall mech, I thought he'd gone mad spending all this money on a sharpening system because I thought our gouges are we, are we gonna get them any sharper they're they're excellent they're brilliant and then and then he sharpened them on the tall mech and I realized this it's levels isn't it there's they're sharp and they're sharp yeah. I think that's the point we're getting at and uh, whilst our gouges before we had the tall mech you wouldn't exactly call them blunt once you've had something like the tall mech you realize that Turn it around again, notice the direction Step. of the grain again, looking at it all the time. That's right. So you're constantly making little alterations, changing things about. I'm going to focus that camera once more. So again, I'll send a message to Yelly. Yelly, if you lose, if you lose the uh, sound, let me know. So yeah. You've got plenty of support under there, haven't you? I have, yeah. I've got two blocks underneath. And that's what I'm doing for this particular love spoon because it's very wide in the vise. It's just on the limit because I've got my block of wood here to make sure I'm carving square on. It's right on the limit of what my vise can take. So I've got two blocks underneath. Yeah, because it's... Uh... We have got another piece of equipment that we'll have to show people later, Dave. You know, yeah, because the there's all the sorts of different ways for securing. Yeah, there's, the um, oh, I'm trying to think now, one of, um, I think it was Joe. Hello, Joe, if you if you see this. I think Joe was was telling me earlier in the year, um, he was he mentioned about uh, a system, I can't remember if it was called something like a dog clamp or something like this, where yeah. it sort of secures to the bench. It had a dif yeah. different system of, of gripping. Basically, you know, there are, there are all sorts of different ways of securing whatever you're working on 
find what suits you and your style of carving best. You know, don't, you don't have to stick to using a vice like we do. Find what works for you. It's, it's fascinating as well. As you're carving that, you know, and you're concentrating on that camera. Yeah. You know, um... It's interesting, because I'm concentrating on that camera, but I'm also worried about what that camera's doing. Yeah, but... Cameras you know, everywhere, yeah. To think, like, you know, today... Yeah. Right, I, I would be in a right pickle because... Well, okay, I, I would be retired now, but... Um, because you've got the camera, yeah. and you're able to... Um, we can share what we're doing here yeah, with people also, all around the world. We, we are surviving at the moment. Because, yeah, thanks because to... Because of lockdown, etc. Yeah, so that's that's our means it's, for... It's the camera at the moment that, that's helping us to... Yeah, um, where we... Continue uh, I think, working. I think the other thing as well is... Um, you know, there's a lot said about mental health. And I think for us, you know, we, we've always... I've grown up around the workshop and I, I've spent all of my working life and I'm younger as well demonstrating to people what, what we do and it's it's a big loss then not having that for us. Yeah. So the camera sort of replicates it because people sort of say people say to us, doesn't it put you off? Oh I couldn't do that. I could I can do the carving. Or oh, somebody got a put a message on there. Do you want to see what they've asked? Um if somebody if somebody was um, was asking us, you know, somebody asked us questions, they say, I couldn't do that, it would really put me off. And because... Message from Mark Huggins. Oh, no, that, uh, he, no he's, he, he's quite close to us. I'm not going to say Hi. where, because... Hi, Di. Hello there, Mark. Oh, glad, glad you joined us. Yeah, now he's, he's quite close to us. And again, it'd be interesting now, because um, he has mentioned uh, a, a couple of times, yeah, popping in at some stage. And yeah, that'd be fantastic. We're looking for, I'm looking forward to seeing... Seeing some of your, your work up up close and personal. So hiya Mark. Um yeah, it's uh, and that's the nice thing with the Love Spoon then. It's great to be able to share with others, share ideas, to see what other people are coming up with. Yeah, brilliant. Look forward to meeting you in the future. So you can see we're just about now. Well also did the as you're working on it, I don't know how I, I know I'm harping on about it. Right. But you know, this is so important for this year. The camera Oof, for is us. connecting people. Yeah, definitely. You know? Another, um, another comment there. And, and you know, it, it, it's brilliant. Absolutely. And that's what it's doing it as well. It allows us to get in touch with, with other people. Uh, and Also, smiley face is Adam Davis. Good evening, Di. Hello, Adam. Wow. How are you? Hope all's well with you and your family. There we are. Now Adam, you Adam now Adam's worked here. Yeah. Not many people can say that. There's, there's a, in in terms of that's Adam's the only uh, the only one other than there's Adam and Andrew. Yeah. And there's oh there's Sean as well. I'm trying to think. Oh you you had a few apprentices. Yeah. And I remember Adam. I remember him carving. Um, that's when we had the bench in a different position. And I remember Adam carving a few key rings. He's doing some great stuff now. Yeah. Him and, him and his him and his brother doing some really good stuff in terms of designing. So yeah, great to hear from you. Hope it's all all going well. He's a good design. Worth checking out. Anyone who's interested in design that sort of thing, worth checking out what they're doing. They're doing some fantastic stuff in terms of sustainable products. Yeah, brilliant. Well worth well worth having a look. There we go. Right now that. I'm going to need a... Ah, you'll have to come in and see us again. You'll have to all come in and see us again. When, when it's possible, you'll have to pop in, do some more, do some more carving and stuff. But it's, it's always interesting because I see on social media, I see what, what Adam's doing, the stuff that he's making, the materials he's using. So yeah, keep up, keep up the good work. Right, so, I, you know, I make a point there now. You notice there was actually using a bit of fine sandpaper there. Yeah, I need so, a rough piece some of sandpaper. People wouldn't recommend that because um, obviously you're using <laughs> gouges, so he's he's put a little bit of grit in the um, in the timber there. So it's some people would sort of be a bit concerned about that. Yeah, um, truth is, is, I do everything technically wrong, so... Um, that's you know, true. That's I do everything completely yeah. wrong, so I, I don't worry well, about it, it. It's all about enjoying it. It, it is, you know, and do it the best way you can. Well, we get asked as well, how did you learn wood carving? 
And that's how I learned wood carving, is by doing everything wrong. And I was very fortunate, because I had somebody here to tell me I was doing everything wrong. <laughs> I'm still telling you you're doing it wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's the point. You know, somebody... You, you could... You know, different people have got different sort of um, ideas about things. And you yeah, know, some absolutely. people are really concerned about their chisels on that edge. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the that's right. least little thing can spoil the edge. And, absolutely. Uh, right. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to finish off by here. I'm just going to, yeah, a little, a smaller, this is a lovely gouge. That one there that we're going to be working with, that's a really nice gouge. And I'm just going to do a little bit more. Just say cheers to Adam, can we see you when you, when you get a chance to uh, pop in, all right? Because that's a couple more comments. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, look we'll, look we'll forward to soon. look forward to seeing everyone when, uh, when we're allowed to again. Definitely. Yeah, they, they, they're doing some fantastic work. Fair play to them. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a different... It's, you, you, I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to show you some of the things that they're doing because I know that you, yeah, you'd, be, you'd be interested in seeing it. Or, there we are. So I think now, I think we've got the, a lot of... I think we're well on our way to completing... I, I'll put it over to you there. What, what, what are your thoughts? I think we're well on our way... Yeah, it's, it's a good... It's, it's a... It's a, good, it's a start, good start, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's still plenty of work to go. And, um... I think as well, one thing that would benefit, you mentioned the sandpaper, and yeah, different schools of thought on that. But I think one thing I would like to do with that one is actually um, a more coarse piece of sandpaper because I'd like to get the camera body um, a bit flatter. Although you do have them with all the, the sort of grips all over them. So we'll have a think about that. But there we are. You can see we've got our... Twist around the outsides, we've got our shape of our globe, and um, we're well on with our camera. Thanks again for watching. I just see. Oh, definitely. I've just seen there with Adam saying he'll pop in soon. Brilliant. When we're all allowed, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, thanks for watching. That's this week's live stream. We'll be continuing that progress. You can see some of the other symbols that we've got to work on over the next few weeks. So hopefully we make progress on that. I'm actually also working out on this one, how we're going to go about carving the spoon as well. Oh, that's easy. That's good. Yeah, it's gripping it in the vice. Well, it's just think about. Take, them, take that out. There we are, see? He's trying to make out that bit's difficult now. Oh, come on. There we are. Yeah, Any final yeah. comments from Thomas Woodcarver? Yeah, i got to go put the chickens in. There we are. He's going to go and put his chickens in. <laughs>